So I've got my Malibu, I've got my pineapple juice, and I've got my Lay. You can even hear some Hawaiian music in the background. So you know what that means? Instant camera roundup, obviously. So the first thing we've got here is the Leica Sofort. Very pricey, but very nice looking camera. We're gonna see if that's worth the money. Now for Fuji, we did bring their basically highest end Instax camera. This is the Neo 90. It's got some nice controls, certainly has a nice look to it, more of a vintage styling. Now I've also got the brand new Instax SQ6. Now this is fully analog, unlike their SQ10, which is digital. This is a square format camera, but a nice new design. We're gonna play with that, that's brand new. And last but not least to round it out, we've got the TL70 from Mint, part of their Instant Flex series. This is actually a twin lens reflex camera and has exposure and manual control. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. I've got a uh, special sex on the beach recipe which I um, stole from the internet, Pinterest. Big smile, <laughs> like a daddy here. Well, I definitely like how the pictures turn out. Are we serious right now? <laughs> <laughs> we got our sippy cup lid on here because it fits perfectly. I guess it'd be a minus green filter. I love the work up top too. Okay, so it's the next day. Clean up our mess. We had some fun last night. You know, but there's some interesting takeaways. I mean, first off, what I found interesting is that everybody really enjoyed using the instant film. I mean, there's something about that process, seeing the picture right away. See how instant it is? Dad, it's not instant at all, it's still white. What are you talking about? You just gotta wait. That's what instant means. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good enough for me in my day, damn it. And uh, you know, I think what I wanna do next is just show the four cameras and really talk about you know, what are the differences between them? You know, why would you choose one over another? What can they do that the others can't do? So uh, let's clean up this mess and get to that. Okay, so first up is the Fuji Instax Mini 90. And really what I love about the Mini 90 is its retro design. It's a nice looking camera to carry around and it does have some nice upgrades. I like the rechargeable battery, you know, just to save waste. I like the viewfinder up here at the top left. It's really easy to frame, I prefer that. And you get some nice advanced features here. The party mode, for example, is really handy if you wanna get more light in in a, in a low light situation. The kids mode ups the shutter speed, so it gives you a better chance if you're not using flash outdoors to try to free subject matter. You can also add or decrease your exposure, which is a lot of fun. And by far my favorite option, the double exposure mode. We had a lot of fun with that. It's unpredictable uh, and that could be expensive in the grand scheme of things, but it's also a lot of fun. It was some forethought. You can do some neat stuff with it. Now for notable downsides on the Instax 90, tripod thread on the side of the camera. Look where they put the tripod hole on done. this one. <laughs> but I warmed up too. What good is that? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna use this on the tripod, you better like doing a lot of vertical shots because that's where you get the control. Horizontal, it only goes so far and you better make sure you got a ball head. And the other thing here, it's a good lens. I mean, I'm, I'm impressed by the sharpness. The exposure's always been pretty accurate on these cameras, but it is an f12.7 lens, and so that's really not a good light gathering lens. What we found was in any sort of mid to low light situation, if you're not using the flash, you're asking for trouble. And by trouble, I mean you're wasting money. So a really nice, capable camera. We did have a lot of fun with this. Now here's the Leica Sofort. It's actually like pretty cool, like aesthetically. It's a beautiful camera, yeah. I like, I like the color, I like the, uh, the trim and everything. You know, it's a very handsome camera, but effectively, this is an Instax Fuji 90 in a different outer shell. So from a purely numbers game, is this just basically a Fujifilm 90 for more than twice the price? Yes, absolutely it is. That'd be, that's, that's exactly what's happening here. But at the same time, we have to think that analog is to some extent about design. And when both these cameras are on the table, people naturally gravitated towards the Leica. It does have a beautiful design. Besides, it's not the most expensive camera on the table. 
So next up is the Mint TL70. And I think the first thing that you're obviously gonna notice is this is a twin lens reflex. You're focusing through this lens, but it's taking the picture through this one. And that immediately gives you a real cool factor. You've got the waist level finder with all the standard accoutrements. There's a very hard to pull out magnifier in there. You've also got a speed shooting uh, window. You can go through here for quick action. I mean, it's fun stuff. Uh, the screen on this particular version is the new bright screen as well. We found it quite usable. Now that also means that you're relying on a manual focus system. Now you can focus right off the screen, it works great. And I guess my only complaint there would be that it will intimidate some early users or beginners who just wanna get fun party photos, especially as you start getting a few drinks in you. But for anybody creative, that's the real pull of the TL70. Having the manual focus, having full aperture control, and on top of that being a 5.6 lens to give you the light gathering that you're gonna need. Having an exposure control function here, minus or plus, it is a full stop darker or brighter, but still Still, it does give you some flexibility. You've even got right here a bulb setting. I do also want to mention that anybody at the party who is familiar with manual cameras naturally gravitated towards this. You know, not just the look of it, but just the creative control and having that flexibility. And the images actually offered something very unique as well. Not just having the depth of field control with that big aperture range, but also noticing that at wider apertures, the lens has a lot of vignetting, which actually added character to it. It has a different rendition of color, and you'd often get some interesting ring-shaped flare spots. So this was a big hit visually. You also have a nice exposure meter inside, so it will help you out. If your exposure is within range, it'll give you a green light for go. And if it's not, it'll give you an orange indicator to say you're too light, you're too dark. And so overall, the camera looks like a really fun and powerful creative tool. But unfortunately, that's where it kind of goes off the rails. So first off, this camera is the most expensive out of the bunch. And to its credit, there are some very novel design features. I mean, they made basically a full functioning TLR, but the build quality does have a very cheap kind of feel to it. I mean, you know, the sides of the leatherette feel like they're gonna start peeling off, everything creaks and cricks, and a lot of these dials and buttons are quite plasticky. The flash, for example, when it pops up, it's a clever place, but getting it to close again requires, as you can see, quite a press in the right spot and there's a lot of other things where it just kind of feels like it's not fully baked. We had some more issues beyond that. Although taking pictures of the red button down here were great, the eject button over here often doesn't eject the film. I push the button and then I push this button and nothing happens and then I push this button again and nothing happens and I push both and nothing happens. So it's inconsistent. Yeah, I do it sort of feels inconsistent. Yeah. Also, if this viewfinder is, you know, closed in a little bit funny or it's not quite open, you'll jam your film and just wreck it if it's a new pack of film. So, you know, there was a lot of stuff here that just doesn't totally feel well thought out. In the aperture controls as well, they give you this fun little bouquet Easter egg. And that's what they call it because when you buy the camera, you have no idea what you're gonna get. Can you do out of focus interesting bouquet like hearts or stars or diamonds? It's kind of a crapshoot. And we tested it here. I think it's supposed to be hearts, but it wasn't cut very well. Uh, maybe it's not sitting properly in front of the lens, but again, it doesn't inspire confidence in this tool. Okay, so after that huge rant though, let me just make myself clear. I mean, where this is awesome is if you wanna take instant photography into a more creative place. And for that, I think the price of admission would be worthwhile. You're paying for a unique shooting experience, much like you would have liked a range finder. You know, the money's not the issue anymore. It's, do I get to do something unique and different in photography? And in this instant realm, I would say, yes, you absolutely get to do that. I just wish it wasn't so flaky. Okay, oh, <laughs> well, you can see there, this thing has a terrible grip and I do wanna talk about that. Okay, so now we've got the brand new Fujifilm SQ6. And of course this square body design is there because this is their first analog square shooting camera. Now this camera, although it looks very basic and simplistic, to its credit, actually has a lot of the fun features from the Neo 90 series. You've got things like selfie mode, macro capability, double exposure, you can go lighter and darker with your exposure and control your flash as well. So it was a very, very fun camera to play with. They did have a little departure here going back to a disposable battery system, but it's CR2s, so they should promise long lasting battery life. Now the SQ6 has this interesting off-on 
button at the top. The only issue is that most people will naturally pick up the camera and start hitting that as a shutter and it doesn't work. You've actually got the shutter down here on the grip and this is my main gripe with the camera. The grip is terrible. It's really hard to hold on to this camera positively. I feel like I'm gonna push that shutter button by accident and I'm sure it has happened quite a bit at the party. I wish that they had this off on button click to on and then push down to actually fire the, the photos. That would have made far more sense. The other thing I didn't like for me personally, the viewfinder up here is on the top right. That means your face is mashed in behind the camera. I like it on the other Fujifilm cameras where it's off to the side on the left. But those are minor gripes. We've got a nice flash up here at the top and they've actually included these fun little color filters. We played with them. Some of them come in a little bit dark, but you know what? They're a fun neat addition and you could certainly have some creative fun just sticking those on. So last couple things I wanna mention. Parallax issue on the SQ6 is the worst. And what I mean by that is, if my viewfinder's up here, but the lens is down here, I'm not exactly seeing the same frame. At a distance, that's not a big deal, but up close doing macros, if I frame here in the square, my shot's way off to the bottom left. This is a problem with all the cameras that we've played with here tonight, but by far this one has the biggest part of that issue. The other thing I wanna mention is just a fun thing. This lens is a little bit larger physically, so what we did was we stuck a sippy cup lid on the end and we took some truly horrifying photographs, which we can see here. So you're welcome for that. So in finishing this up, I know some of you might've had the time to think about this and say, well, hey, Chris, you dummy, why don't you just turn the camera on its side like this, cause it's square, and then you can have the viewfinder where you like it, you prima donna. But then the problem is that the label at the bottom of the square photo is now on the side and it's gonna look stupid on my fridge, ha! So I think the big takeaway after playing with the assistant cameras at the party was that they're just a lot of fun. I mean, that's the key thing. Everybody had a good time and it's great to see people getting excited about photography again. And I guess the only thing I wanna say is the cynic in me kind of thinks that it's fun, but it's only fun for a short time and the novelty kind of wears off. Because after you get those pictures and then you know you wanna maybe look at them again or post them on Instagram or share them with other people that weren't there, well, then you get into the obvious problem of analog photography. And that's where you might just wish, oh, I thought I could just take those on my phone and share them with you right now. That'd be so much more convenient. But again, your experience could be very different. The only other thing I want to get across is that although it was a very fun experience, it's also kind of an expensive experience, no doubt. I mean, on that one night, we must have burned through $150 Canadian worth of film, and that's gonna add up every time you have a get together. All right, so the last thing I wanna mention, I know we only played with four cameras here. We just tried to choose a cross section in the smaller formats, but Dan Bricali at deepyourview.com is working on an awesome article. It'll be up shortly, and it's gonna be a rundown of a lot of the instant cameras out there on the market. It's gonna give you a ton of information, so don't miss that. The other thing I wanna say is if you really did enjoy this, video, let us know, and then maybe we'll do the larger formats. That could be a really interesting thing to talk about as well. Don't forget, check us out on Instagram, go to our Twitter accounts, let us know comments below. What do you think about instant analog photography and where it's going to go in the future? Maybe share some of your experiences with it. We would love to hear that. Otherwise, we're going to have a great new video coming out very soon. Until then, see you soon.